to the side here is Jay Patel, who is our product manager for third-party apps and SDK. And so today, obviously, want to talk to you about our TiVo platform SDK and program. A lot of this will be uh, somewhat familiar, given what you've uh, all seen uh, you know, this morning leading up. Our friends at uh, uh, AT&T and LG and Google, all have, we all have various things in common, so we'll spend a little bit of time here. We've only got about a dozen slides. Talk to you a little bit about TiVo and you know, the things that we do that are similar, as well as a little bit different. Uh, but first, uh, just so I get a gauge, how many of you are, well, for, how many of you have TiVo? Okay, great. And how many of you are at least familiar with TiVo and who we are? Okay, great. Well, I'll run through a little bit of that, and uh, some of you may be uh, a little bit uh, more or less up to speed on kind of, you know, where TiVo is and what we're doing about apps, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that, and then we'll spend a little bit of time talking about, uh, we actually have multiple ways you can develop apps for TiVo. Um, so some of the folks you've seen uh, this morning have one or two. We actually have a, a few. The usual stuff. Um, first of all, so those of you uh, who are familiar with us from our consumer products in the United States, obviously, yes, we have TiVos that we sell at Best Buy and Amazon. Uh, you can go pick these up in retail. These are, uh, you know, the, the TiVos that you know and love. But increasingly, a lot of our business over the past few years has been licensing our set-top box and our services technology to cable operators in the U.S. and around the world. And this is going to become very important as I talk about the kind of platform reach and distribution that we have. In the U.S., we work with folks like, uh, obviously, Comcast and DirecTV, uh, Charter Cox. In uh, Europe, we're already deploying with folks like Virgin Media and Ono. And these repre all represent part of the footprint uh, for whom a lot of our TiVo apps can be, can be developed. So uh, unlike uh, some of the folks who are, you know, one operator that offers you an opportunity or folks that are a CE manufacturer that offer, offer you an opportunity, TiVo offers you a, a cross-operator opportunity, which, uh, you know, is, represents some good potential across, you know, many different markets. So we have a consumer business and we have a, our service provider business, which is what I just talked about. We also have a media advertising and, and audience research measurement business. Um, we are about uh, 500 people. I think the number that you probably most care about on this slide is the number of subscribers we have today, which is approximately 2, 2.1 million. We are rapidly deploying uh, uh, subscribers both in the U.S. and, uh, uh, and overseas. Uh, Virgin Media added a quarter million boxes last quarter alone, and so uh, you'll see this number go up, and I won't say uh, too much more than that. But let me tell you a little bit about where we see our internal product focus, and then that will extend to how we think about where uh, developers and, and developer apps play in the TiVo ecosystem. So uh, I think, uh, or, or we like to think that we are focused on the gold standard television experience. A lot of people are, of course, big fans of the, the TiVo UI. We spend a lot of time thinking about uh, television uh, behavior, what people do in front of the TV, what are best practices. Um, but in addition to the TiVo UI itself, we've spent a lot of time thinking about things like content discovery and personalization, uh, things that we do not just on the set-top box itself, but in the cloud. And this is the intelligence that we have about all of our subscribers and what they do in, in aggregate, and in some cases, what they do very specifically. And some of what we're, we're working on is how this intelligence can be made available um, you know, for application developers and, and for operators to, to take advantage of in interesting ways. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have uh, you know, a lot of stuff that we do around universal search, and I'll get to uh, the big part, which is we've been working for actually quite a while in content and applications. We were uh, among the first to have uh, things like Netflix and Amazon and Pandora and YouTube uh, and all these variety of content applications on our platform. One of the things that we do uh, that is rather unique compared to everybody else is we actually have your linear television, your cable VOD, and your internet content coming all in in one box. We index all of the program guide data and we know for every subscriber what they have access to. So this is again a very interesting point. Obviously there are uh, television uh, cable operator or satellite boxes which have obviously their own programming and then you, many of you are familiar with over the top type boxes which have OTT programming but no linear. We actually have everything coming into one box uh, and you know this represents an interesting vantage point for us. 
Uh, in addition, we have uh, uh, companion apps, our iOS and Android apps, which interact with the DVR and the local network uh, to provide uh, both remote control as well as enhanced information on your companion second screen. Uh, and we're doing a lot of stuff now around whole home, uh, whole home distribution. So you can have a, a TiVo box in one room and you can have thin TiVo clients in the other room that replicate the experience you have on your main DVR. So, um, we like to think that we are building the ultimate application development platform for television, and it is specifically predicated on some of the unique things that, that we think we, we do compared to others. Uh, number one, we are on input one, and we are the default experience for television in all of our households, uh, as opposed to you have to tune away to input two or input three or input four, or you have to pick up the separate remote. We are, when you, uh, in our households, you use the TV remote to turn on the TV and access all of the apps and TV services at the same time. Uh, we're rapidly deploying TiVo in the U.S. and with cable operators around the world, and we think this is an interesting opportunity, U.S. and internationally. We have a trusted relationship with our users. Those of you who are TiVo fans are at least familiar with the kind of relationship that we, we have with our community. Um, you know, we like to introduce them to new products and services, uh, you know, and we try to be on the uh, leading, if not bleeding edge of things, and, you know, apps are one thing that we've been doing for a little while, albeit in a closed platform, uh, or a little bit more of a closed way, but uh, we're, we are intending on using that goodwill to try to introduce folks to new and exciting things that they, they might want to do on their television. And the last point being, with our users' permission, we can use our knowledge of their preferences and viewing behavior to provide recommendations, enhanced TV, and app experiences. Some of you see this all ready today. If you have, uh, have TiVo, obviously we provide program recommendations. We know what you watch. Obviously we don't snoop that on an individualized basis, but we use a lot of intelligence to recommend you things. And what we are hoping to do is obviously start recommending you things like applications based on programming you might watch or other things you might be interested in. So, um, I'd like to talk about, we actually have three different ways that you can develop apps for TiVo, and we're, we'll go into each one of these in a little bit detail, um, a little bit less technical detail than you might have seen in earlier presentations, although those of you who are familiar with, you know, what you've seen from the other developers, our platform is similar in many ways. We won't show you any code snippets, but uh, leave it to you. If you're familiar with those, you'll be familiar with us. Um, we have on-box apps. So these are apps, obviously, that run on the first screen. Uh, we have companion apps. These are apps that would run on the second screen. And we have web apps. These are apps that could run in a browser or in the cloud, but interact with TiVo cloud services that can also talk to the DVR in a synchronous or asynchronous capacity. Uh, so at this point, uh, David and I will switch off a little bit, talking a little bit about uh, the sort of use cases and, and what's behind the technology for each of these. Um, first of all, on-box apps. These are apps that run locally on the TiVo box with Adobe Air today or HTML5, which is coming uh, in the back half of this year. Um, examples that we already support today, you know, some of the marquee partners we have worked with, but we'll be opening this up to uh, folks like yourselves. Obviously things like video like Netflix or music like Pandora or photos like Flickr, but obviously we have some uh, small casual games, which those of you have TiVo have seen. Uh, these are the types of apps that uh, fall into this class. So with that, let me uh, give David the clicker for his couple slides. So, uh, hi. Uh, this is a, um, a diagram of kind of where your application would fit into our ecosystem. Uh, we have the TiVo, this is for on-box applications. We have the TiVo device. We have um, a suite of services. And then we, we're providing an SDK that is specific to uh, the execution environment that you're going to build your application in. Uh, the TiVo UI is also built on top of that same execution environment um, and uses the same services. Uh, there are all, some of the services are hosted on the box. You know, we have a limited amount of data that we keep on the box. And then we have a lot more data that we keep on the internets. And so uh, when you have a question or a query, 
uh, and it can't be satisfied on the box, it's transparently forwarded onto our cloud service um, and responds as if it was hosted on the box. So the execution environment that we are primarily supporting right now is Adobe Air for TV 2.5. Um, we're intending to upgrade that to Air 3.0 and add HTML5 uh, in this year. Um, so the idea is that uh, a lot of people have support for Air applications. It shouldn't be too difficult to transfer the bulk of your application onto our platform. Uh, It'll be when you want to access unique TiVo services, then you'll be using our SDK. And th some of the things that you can uh, do with our uh, SDK is to retrieve information about the device and the user, um, which you can use for like linking accounts, that kind of thing, uh, invoke uh, some of the media streaming services and the uh, DRM protection management kind of stuff. Uh, also, um, keeping track of what the user is watching or what is on the tuners. You know, as we know, our, our boxes have multiple tuners and are constantly doing things on all of these tuners. And uh, as long as the user is okay with you having that information, you can get the information about what program is on, where they are within the program, what channel it is, and so on. Uh, some of the things that we're not doing at the moment is providing a general web browser experience on the TV. I think a lot of the presentations have kind of said that it's not that great an experience, and so we're not really pushing for it. Um, the other thing is that we're not right now supporting a, a native C++ development on the box or Java development. So, um, so the way that we expose our uh, SDK um, extensions uh, for the unique TiVo services that are not just part of Flash is through an Air Native extension. The idea is that you would just use your standard Adobe tools to, um, to, to incorporate this library into your application. When it's installed on the box, it'll invoke the device APIs that are associated with it. Um, most of our APIs are asynchronous. Uh, even though they are on the box, uh, we uh, have noticed in our uh, development experience that the UI needs to be free to respond to user events uh, while you might have one or two or many uh, expensive queries being processed looking up data from uh, the, the database that's on the box. Also, anything that goes off to the web uh, to be serviced is kind of inherently asynchronous, so we don't want you blocking the UI uh, while that's being processed. Um, so how you, if you, you know, you've developed an application or you ha uh, you already have an application from another platform and you want to run it on a set-top box. Uh, our current methodology is to, you would just host, a, host your application on a server. Uh, you have to get your device provisioned for uh, application development. Uh, and then you can use the TiVo UI to uh, find and install your application and reinstall it as you test and develop. Say a little just... Uh about the companion app, some of you may be familiar with the iOS and the uh, just recently released Android apps that we, we have available. These represent a very similar use case to those of you who might want to develop a second screen or companion app. I, this app runs on the local network, um, it talks to the, the TiVo box over Wi-Fi, and uh, can get a variety of, uh, of data that way. So this is another picture that, um, where I've taken some boxes away and put some new boxes on the screen. Um, and here you've got your CE device, and that can be your favorite CE device that you want to develop for, and your application lives on there. We have um, a, sort of a standard uh, JSON over HTTPS methodology for uh, communicating with the device. Uh, the, the, the device will then forward on requests just like it does on the OnBox APIs. Uh, the services that live on the box are the same services that are provided uh, via the SDK, though um, the SDK wraps them a little bit nicer, so you're not really dealing with HTTP, you're just making function calls, but they're, they're, they're driven by the same services. Uh, also, if, so the, uh, the, the device to device communication only can happen 
when you are on the same local network. So if you want to uh, work in some capacity when you're away from your home, then you can also talk directly to our web services with some uh, reduction in uh, what features are available. So again, uh, the, the services that are exposed to not on box uh, applications are via JSON in, JSON out over HTTPS. Um, most of the same APIs that make sense to expose to companion applications will be available. Uh, in order to discover what TiVo devices are on your local network, we use Bonjour. It's, there's open source to be a Bonjour client. Um, uh, right now, if you want to build an application uh, that talks to a TiVo, you have to have a TiVo issued SSL certificate. Um, and that identifies the application and ensures that nobody is pretending to be you and it also ensures that people aren't abusing uh, the box. Um, again, remote web services are, are, are automatically forward. You, you don't really have to know. In fact, we may change uh, which services are provided by the device and which services are provided th via the web. And you can talk to the web services directly using the same, same protocol, same certificate. You, you just basically change the IP address. Our last category are web apps. And some of you who've been familiar with TiVo for a long time know that among things that we've had are web scheduling. And we've, uh, we can do this at TiVo.com where you know, you're on vacation, you can go schedule your TiVo box at TiVo.com. We've actually uh, licensed this out to folks like uh, Yahoo TV and zap to is the example here um, and uh, a couple other places. Uh, the uh, web scheduling stuff exists today and there will be more coming along this path, but this is kind of designed things that run on the web when you are not on box or on the local network either. So just for sym symmetry, there's a diagram here for how your web application would talk to our web services, but it's pretty straightforward. Um, and so one of the things that we do with our web services that aren't really interesting on the box are things like uh, remote scheduling, which is where you're away from the box and you can send a request, have your box schedule something. Um, we're building out the, which APIs are available on the web uh, as we go, so that's to come. All right, so um, the status of where we are today is the TiVo uh, uh, platform SDK uh, developer program is uh, currently in a, a closed, uh, limited access, but uh, we already have the information page up at uh, tivo.com slash developers. We also have an email alias where you can talk to one of us three here today. We will be opening general program access and wider public documentation a little bit later, uh, probably uh, in a couple months or so, but we encourage you if you have apps that you are uh, developing or would like to develop for our platform to please get in touch with us. Um, we're, uh, we're currently going to choose a, a few folks, uh, a few uh, marquee first partners for this that, uh, that we can work with. So uh, that's the formal presentation. So uh, now we're open for, for questions. Right, so the idea is that for your, for OnBox apps, you're limited in what you can build your application with based on what execution environments we've ported to our platform. Um, on a companion device, it's whatever that companion device has ported to that platform. So if that device supports Air, then you can write in an Air, uh, uh, but you're basically just using HTTP and JSON and you're getting JSON back, so you could write that in anything is the idea. So uh, we're not really, uh, yet providing SDKs for the companion applications uh, because of the wide variety uh, of uh, environments that we'd have to provide an SDK for, but th those are also, you know, in the works, so. Yep, you, you, you form the request in JSON and you receive the response in JSON.
mean, if you're on a companion device, can you pull that video to the device? Uh, we are not making that available at this time. Uh, all I can say is we are not making that available at this time. There, are, as you can imagine, various licensing issues with who that video comes from. There's a, some IP around this, shall we say, so it's something that um, uh, we cannot make available, but uh, you know, we're working to figure out you know, interesting things that we can do. Uh, there should not be. Our cable operators use what we call our hardware porting kit. It's actually a reference spec provided by us. It is it, the, the same, so the TiVo Series 4 that you find in the United States is what is actually being deployed with our cable operators in the U.S. and also in Europe today. So there are a few, uh, obviously, cosmetic differences with the bezel. In some cases, obviously, for Europe, we change out the power supply. Uh, some of them, like Virgin Media, have three tuners instead of two or four, but those don't really Im impact the service or the application environment. Yes. So we're a little bit early to say whether we would support a market in the way that others conceive of it or examples in the marketplace. One of our uh, one of the opportunities that we think is, is very good is obviously being able to bring a lot of these apps across our entire footprint. At the same time, certain of our cable operators are you know, trying to figure out how they and their respective markets get comfortable with these things. So the idea of a fully open marketplace uh, is something that philosophically we would like to do. We are trying to figure out where we are on the spectrum of that. So all I can tell you is we are heading in that direction, but whether we land like some of these other examples you've seen is yet to be determined. Right. So, uh, I guess the, you know, the I revenue models that you've seen from others are ones that we would like to support. Whether we can quote, commit to supporting them in this way uh, is an we have not quite figured out. I will be, you know, frank about saying that. Obviously, if we, if you are able to dis distribute to a cable operator's MSO box, you know, there, you know, whether something works 70-30 as it does somewhere else, or the cable operator gets cuts in, and how that exactly works is something that we have to determine. You can imagine that these are things that we're exploring, but we don't are not able to say concretely because of the different parties that we are taking into account. Uh, let me think about that. Well, yeah, so, so will, the, will this uh, uh, allow you to create a TiVo desktop replacement? I guess uh, those of you who are familiar with the TiVo desktop, uh, it's a PC app that we have that can serve things in and also take video off the box. Um, I'll take that question offline with me. So yeah, that is something that we are looking at. One of the things that it, it will probably be in a future part of our roadmap because of the stage window arbitration that we're going to have to manage. Obviously, you have you have to deal with pause, play, all those kinds of things, channel change, and how we you know, arbitrate things going back and forth. So it is a direction we'd like to go in. It's not something you would see from our necessarily our first generation of, of APIs that are out there. So our consumer target are, frankly, TiVo users or television viewers, uh, folks who are, uh, you know, consumers of television, right? Whether we sell a TiVo box at retail to somebody who buys it there and uses it at home or whether they pick it up from their cable operator, I don't think they're that different from any other consumer who watches television. Anybody else? See, we've got uh, two minutes, and so we'll oh, one over here. Just a quick question. Um, so, say your application is on a TiVo box. Will that application need to be on the home TV to have the benefits that you're saying that they need to get? On 
industry. That's an interesting question. I don't know that we've considered that yet specifically, but I imagine, yes, the goal of the, our TiVo iPad app, the one that we build ourselves, is to replicate you know, much, if not all, of the experiences of the, our own UI on the screen. Oh, this is, this is an easy question. We actually provide regular software updates to TiVo multiple times a year. And so uh, apps, uh, uh, if you ever bought a TiVo in the past few years, uh, most people are familiar with we deliver software updates on a very regular basis. The box continues to improve as you have it in the home. So unlike others, you do not necessarily need to buy a new TiVo box to get new features unless for some reason there's you know something that that new box has that it doesn't. But People who've had Series 3s in their home, they receive uh, uh, Netflix and YouTube way after you know they bought their box in winter. So. Also, uh, note that there's no um, schedule. Like you know, we, we schedule our software updates, um, but we can deploy apps to boxes outside of a software update. So, when it, whenever a new app comes along that we want to deploy, we can we can map to boxes. So right now we are a little bit more monolithic, as in everybody gets all apps. Um, people can you know, mark certain things as favorite if they happen to, to choose things. Um, you know, as for kind of a, a self-install and marketplace, this is where I think because of, again, the, the earlier question around, um, you know, we work with a, a number of different cable operators who we think that represents great opportunity. At the same time, some of them may take a look at certain apps and say, I want to be comfortable with this before I provision this out. So, And again, this is why we are taking a little bit of a perhaps slower approach than others, why we would love to talk to those of you who are interested and we're going to you know, start essentially pre-selling some of the vision of what we'd like to do with our distribution partners. And last one over here, because I think that's yeah. it. Or no more. No more. I did not mention about revenue model. Uh, well, I responded to an earlier question to say we're early, and now we're over time. Uh, but you can find either myself, uh, David, or Jay will be uh, hanging out by the side. But thank you very much for your time. We appreciate the attention.